Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I will be conducting a presentation on conducting an exterior preflight inspection on the Piper Seminole. Uh, in this presentation, I will go over the exterior preflight checklist for the Piper PA44 Seminole, uh, just basically detailing all the uh, things to look out for and all the steps that you take in the order of operations that you go around the airplane. Uh, so with this checklist, you begin inside the cockpit. And as you go around the airplane, you'll go around the back of the right wing. And then you'll move around the, to the front of the right wing. And then that moves around to the nose, and then to the left wing. And then you go around back, uh, down the fuselage to the empennage. And then around the empennage up to the uh, right side of the fuselage and back up to the cockpit. Uh, some basic things when you're looking at the checklist and uh, going over the checklist and looking for things on the airplane, you're looking for visible damage or corrosion on the airframe itself. Uh, there's a picture of some corrosion. Uh, you're looking for uh, good operation of all the flight control surfaces and everything that's on the outside of the airplane, uh, making sure that they're free moving and that everything's all working good. Uh, you're making sure that all the lights on the outside of the airplane work. Uh, proper inflation of the tires and the struts, uh, and any other specific items on the checklist that I might not have mentioned here. So beginning with the right wing, uh, you begin by draining the fuel out of the, the fuel sump using the fuel cup. Uh, to the right there is a picture of uh, somebody who drained fuel and found that there was a lot of water inside the fuel and that all the water had settled at the bottom of the fuel uh, cup there. And you're going to be checking for the correct color of the fuel. Uh, you're going to be checking for any sediment or any like loose particles or objects. And you're going to continue draining the fuel until all the sediment is gone. Uh, and then you're just going to be looking over the wing. You're going to be checking the overall condition of it. You're going to be looking for corrosion. Uh, you're going to be looking at all the rivets, making sure they're in place and they're all you know, set correctly. And then you're going to be clearing the wing of snow and ice if there happens to be any on there. Uh, continuing on, you'll be checking the flaps and the, air, uh, the ailerons. Uh, just basically freedom of movement, making sure that they move the correct amount. Uh, you'll be checking the hinges, making sure they're all uh, looking okay. You'll be checking for corrosion in the hinges and making sure all the pieces are there. Uh, and then you're going to be checking the static wicks on the outside of the uh, wing usually or wherever it's located. Uh, if there's if they're frayed or if they're broken, you you know that's what you want to look for. Uh, continuing on, you'll be checking the lights on the outside of the airplane on the right wing, uh, making sure they're operational. Uh, just looking at the light itself, if there's any visible damage or anything like that. Uh, you're going to be checking the fuel cap scupper drain and the fuel vents, uh, making sure those both are free of debris. Uh, next up, you'll be removing the aircraft tie down if it's tied down. Uh, and then you'll be checking the fuel and oil caps, making sure those are secure and making sure, you know, as stated before, they're free of debris or anything like that. Uh, and then you'll move on to the engine of the airplane. Uh, you'll be checking the propeller and the spinner, uh, making sure there's no visible damage, just making, you know, just looking over and making sure everything looks okay. And then the air inlets of the engine, making sure they're free of debris. Uh, next up, we'll be checking the cow flaps, uh, making sure they're operating normally. These are the, the flaps that open up on the bottom of the engine to let air into the engine, uh, making sure they operate normally, that there's any visible damage, and that they're free of debris, they're not blocked up or anything like that. Uh, you'll check the main gear on the right wing. Uh, the strut should be properly inflated to 2.6 inches or, you know, plus or minus, you know, a quarter of an inch. Uh, you'll measure that and you'll make sure that that's the amount that's exposed on the outside, uh, on the strut itself. And then you'll be checking the tire to make sure it's properly inflated and there's, you know, obviously it's not visibly damaged, uh, you know, making sure that the tread is all good and everything looks okay. Uh, and then you'll be checking the brakes, you'll be checking the, the 
you know, the calipers and the rotors and making sure there's no damage to those and making sure those work. And then you'll be removing the track from the wheel. Moving on to the nose, you move uh, around the front of the wing and going up to the nose. Uh, same thing as before, making sure the general condition of the nose is good, there's no corrosion, all the rivets are in place, it's free of any visible damage. Um, clean the windshield while you're there. Uh, checking the battery vents to, making sure, uh, to make sure that they're clear, uh, free and clear of debris. Uh, you'll be checking the lights on the outside of the airplane to, making, to make sure that they're operational and that they're not damaged. And then the heater air inlet, uh, making sure that there's nothing stuck in there that's free of debris. Uh, and then you'll be removing the chalk from the nose gear. And then you'll be checking the nose gear. You'll, uh, the strut should be inflated to 2.7 inches, plus or minus a quarter of an inch. And the same thing as the right wing gear. Uh, you'll be checking the tire to make sure that it's, uh, you know, looks fine, it's properly inflated, and you'll be checking the brakes. Moving on to the left wing, it's basically the same as the right wing, but it's somewhat backwards because you're moving from the front of the left wing uh, around to the back of the left wing. So it's a little different of an order and some additional items that you'll be checking on the left wing include like stall warning vanes, just making sure those aren't damaged. And then the pedostatic head, you check for the damage, uh, making sure it's not damaged obviously, and then making sure that the pedo and the static uh, uh, tubes are free of debris. And then you'll be moving down the left fuselage, uh, just overall condition of it, obviously, making sure there's no corrosion, there's all the rivets are in place, everything looks good. Uh, then you'll be checking the emergency exit door, uh, making sure that you can open and close. And then you'll uh, wanna make sure that that's closed and locked before you start flying. Uh, checking the antennas on the left side of the airplane, check for damage, making sure they're operational in the cockpit, making sure that the radios work and everything. Uh, and then the fresh air inlet for the, you know, fresh air inside the cabin, making sure that's free of debris. Uh, moving on to the empennage or the tail of the airplane, obviously checking the general condition. Uh, then you want to make sure that the this side, the, all the control surfaces and everything are clear of ice and snow. Uh, and the stabilator and the rudder and their trim tabs, making sure that they have a good freedom of movement. You know, they're not locking up. They don't feel like they're, you know, dragging anything like that and making sure that they have the full range of motion. Uh, you're going to check the hinges for these, uh, for these pieces and these control surfaces, making sure that there's no corrosion or anything like that. There's no missing pieces, obviously, that'd be bad. And then, you know, just checking the general condition of all the surface, you know, is there any corrosion, is any rivets missing, anything like that. Uh, there's some static wicks back here, so you're going to check for damage on those two. And then there's another tie down on this side, so you'll be removing that as well. Uh, moving up the right side of the fuselage, uh, it's basically the same as the left side, but uh, this time you add on the baggage and cabin doors, making sure they're operating correctly, making sure they're opening and closing fully. Uh, checking the hinges, making sure they're all good, and then uh, closing and latching the baggage door. So that's basically the entire checklist for the Piper PA44. That's a pretty good generalization of a normal checklist for a normal aircraft, any aircraft that you're going to be hopping into. And, you know, always remember if anything sticks out to you or is concerning to you, don't fly. I mean, Ultimately, you are the pilot in command and you make the decision yourself to fly. So by making that decision, you gotta remember not to put yourself or others in danger. Uh, if you fly without performing the checklist or you ignore things that pop up on the checklist, any abnormalities or anything like that, this could put you or others in danger. I mean, the checklist exists for a reason. It's to make sure that the airplane is in good working order. Uh, you can't pull over on the side of the highway if things go wrong. You know, the airplane, you just can't pull over like in a car. All right. 
thank you for watching my presentation on how to conduct an ex uh, exterior pre-flight inspection on a Piper PA44 Seminole.